lives together strong. Have you come to save your apes? So back in 2011, director Rupert Wyatt gave us Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And I love this movie. I thought it was freaking fantastic. Dang near a perfect film. Three years later in 2014, Mav Reeves decided to take over to give us Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Still a great movie picked up right after the last, but I thought it was a slight step down. Still a great movie, but I'll talk about why it was a step down just a little bit later. But now, Matt Reeves is back, the guy that's going to direct the Batman in the DCE Cinematic Universe to bring us War of the Planet of the Apes. And how did it hold up to the past two? Well, let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So, leading up to this movie, fans from all over the place, whether they're in comment sections, forums all over the place, are just asking themselves, like, oh my gosh... I'm so looking forward to this movie. It's my one of my most anticipated of 2017. Is this going to complete the Apes trilogy being one of the best trilogies of all time? I'll touch on that in a second. Me personally, yes, I was very excited about this film. My expectations were high and through the roof. Um, but I did not want to go so far as me saying, is this going to be the best trilogy of all time? Because I, like I said in my intro, I thought Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was a slight step down. But like I said, going into this movie, I was really excited. When I was watching all the trailers, just seeing Woody Harrelson up there is just like this ultimate bad guy and Caesar running through snow on a horse and bullets and spears and stuff flying everywhere. I was really excited. I was really wanting to see a war because if you've seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which came out three years ago, you know that, fa that film ends with um, I forgot his character's name, but he gives a distress call out to bring forces in to come take care of the apes. And that is exactly where that film leaves off. And in a way, is exactly where this film picks up. And the intro to this film, War for the Planet of the Apes, is one of the best intros I've ever seen. I've never been on the edge of my seat before in the first 30 seconds of a movie ever. I, re I really can't think of anything off the top of my head to where I was at the edge of my seats when the opening credits was going to come on. But that is where my first problem with the film lies because if you start the film out so great, I mean, where do, if, if, if you're already on, on the height, you know, where can you go from there? Are you going to go higher, plateau, or go down? And for me personally, this one kind of went down for a little bit for me. This movie comes in at two hours and about 29 minutes, two and a half hours. And a good hour and 10, good hour and 15 minutes of it is extremely slow. And that slow them starts within the first 20 to 25 minutes in the film when the uh, intro is over with. And it's not that it's bad. It's not bad at all. It's just it's not as revved up as when the film started. And I just look at it like this. Say, for instance, it's your birthday and you're going to your favorite restaurant and you order your favorite dish. And let's just say it's a nice juicy ribeye steak if, you know, that's the type of food you eat. And they just pr present it to you and it looks all good and you're diving in and you're eating it and you're just enjoying every bite of it. And it's just so tender and juicy. And then they come over like, oh, wait a minute. Let's take that nice entree out of the way and they replace it with the dessert. And the dessert is good. And you're like, okay, this is a nice dessert. And then, you know, you finish with the dessert and you want them to bring the main course back over, the main entree. And they don't. They give you another dessert. And then they give you another dessert and then another dessert. And the desserts are good, but you're like, hey, you know, thank you for the desserts. This is good, but let's get back to the good stuff. That's kind of how I felt about War for the Planet of the Apes and how the plot flowed along in this linear structure. Because, like I said, the very beginning was so great, but then it just slows down. So you were like, okay, man. You know, when are things going to pick back up again? I like the character development that they're doing right here. I like the story that's playing out. I like how they're building up the villains with Woody Harrelson and his team and how they're showing the family of Caesar and all the apes. I'm liking all of that, but I just wish the film wouldn't have started out so great on a high point, then slowed down so much. I mean, that was really drawn for me to the point where I was like, okay, I want them to get back to some of the action where it was good. But like I said, just because things slow down doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's not great because you get to see another side of the apes in this movie with Caesar and his family. 
Not only has his uh, Caesar's immediately family grown, but all the apes have grown. And while you may think that they're the smartest and they're the strongest, they really are struggling because that distress call came and this army is coming from all different directions trying to take them out. And so that is the main problem that the apes are dealing with in this movie. And they have a lot to lose. One thing that I really do appreciate is how they show the apes progression as far as speech patterns and mannerisms because they really are moving around more and more like human beings instead of walking around on all fours you see them walking around on their two legs they're giving hugs to each other you know shaking hands doing all these human emotions and mannerisms and I really did like that. They also progress much more as far as their voice patterns, especially Caesar, because in the past films, Caesar kind of just sounded kind of ruffled and like he was talking like this. But no, now Caesar is able to articulate his words much more than he was able to in the past films. There is a certain amount of time that has passed by in the past films, and I don't want to spoil that for you here. You just have to go see it for the movie yourself. But way it fit into the context of the film, it really made sense. It was re really believable, and I was on board with every moment of it. Another ape in particular that I want to talk about is the ape. because uh, His name is Bad Ape. He really doesn't have a name, but he refers to himself as Bad Ape. He is very funny to me. He's very hilarious. He is the ape that brought the comedy relief in this film. Don't worry that the comedy did not mess up the serious moments because one of the hardest things in film is trying to mix scary moments, I mean, not scary moments, but serious moments with funny moments. And so you don't have to worry about that there. It was all, you know, flow naturally here with him, you know, just kind of being an innocent ape. So I really did enjoy this ape being in the film and brought it up a lot from the high point that the film was already at before. Speaking of the villains, and everybody wants to know about Woody Harrelson. I mean, great job, sir. This is probably one of the best villains I've seen on screen in a very, very, very long time. And I mean that with just action adventure movies, with comic book movies, with scary movies, with any type of movies. Woody Harrelson is a badass villain. He has the voice. He has the presence. He has the swag. He has all of that. I believed him like, okay, this is just some guy you don't want to double cross. I did not like him other than the fact that he was a great villain because, you know, he is a bad guy. And what makes a, a bad guy great is when they feel or down in the bottom of their heart that what they're doing is the right thing. And you can't argue with them or bargain with them. They just feel that they're right and they know that they're right. But the thing about it, what makes his role so great in the film is that he actually is right. He is 100% right. And I understand where he is coming from. And at the same time, I cannot blame him. But that does not mean that I necessarily agree with his methods on how to go about solving the problem. No, I disagree with him completely there. But he is right. What he perceived is to come in the future actually happens in the film. So it actually makes him 100% right and validates him as a worthy villain within this film to where you really can't argue with him. I mean, I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, I completely understand where Caesar is coming from, played by Andy Serkis, and he should get some type of award or recognition for this role when awards he's coming, or maybe not an award, but just some type of recognition because he is great, and I can't believe I'm talking about him this far late in the review when he was part of the best things in the in the picture. But going back to Woody Harrelson, one of the best scenes in the movie was when uh, he is having dialogue exchanged with Caesar played by Andy Serkis when they're in that room or whatever. And he's like, look, you guys are uh, stronger than us. You're smart as hell. And then he's screaming and he's like, stop being so emotional. That scene right there is the best scene in the whole movie for me. And it doesn't even contain that much action. It's just the mindset behind Caesar and Woody Harrelson's character, the Colonel, as they're going forward, expressing their views and how they view the world. And both of them are right in a sense. They just really have to try to come to some common ground. And unfortunately, they're not, uh, they're not able to do that, which brings on the war. But that is the, the very best scene of the movie. You really get to see where Woody Harrelson is coming from and what makes him tick and what makes him talk. And uh, something else that I noticed in this film is a bunch of the sellouts, a bunch of the coon apes. And coon is basically just, you know, uh, a sellout of his own people. There were apes in this movie that sold out their own people. I haven't seen the original Planet of the Apes films that came out in the 60s. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of them here and there. Also seen bits and pieces where Mark Wahlberg is involved. So I'm not too familiar with those at all. But there was something in this film that told me, I'm like, okay, I feel that this has a direct tie-in to the next 
uh, Planet of the Apes movie that came out in the 60s because a lot of people are saying that this war for the Planet of the Apes is going to lead into the first ape movie that came out in the 60s and I don't want to spoil it for you here but I really do feel that you know this has a, a, a good direct tie into that movie as far as everything else is concerned the action and the adventure does come towards the end but to be honest with you it is slightly disappointing not because it's good because you want to see a war I was going into this movie wanting to see a war and yes there is a war towards the very end of this film and it is entertaining but it's not necessarily the war that I wanted to see myself and I just have to say that the trailers were just a bit misleading. And when I'm judging a film, when I'm reviewing a film, when I'm critiquing a film, just giving my opinion or whatsoever, I try not to rate it based off the trailers because sometimes I do go into a movie without watching any trailers at all. I just like to do that sometimes. But at the same time, if you look at how the film opened up, they had nothing to do with the trailers. That opening is still slightly misleading from what you want to see towards the end of this film. So it is still good, but I did want a little bit more. And if I had to compare the three films, which one is the best? Rise of no, uh, yeah, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the first one that came out in 2011. That one is still the best to me. And as far as where it stands with the second one, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I would say that it's right there. Even I, I can't right now. I still can't decide which one I like more because they both have pros and cons. Um, and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the one that came out in 2014, there were some things with the plot that just did not make sense to me. It, it, it was kind of like, why are y'all doing this? Kind of like a little plot hole here and there. And War for the Planet of the Apes, there is no plot holes or anything like this. Everything made sense and it had a great ending to it, but it did not go the direction that I wanted it to go and just kind of led me on. And, um, you know, my expectations were just a little bit too high. If I had to rate War for the Planet of the Apes out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen War for the Planet of the Apes? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And guys, I really need your help here. I really do want to go see the red carpet premiere of Black Panther that comes out to the, uh, February of 2018 next year. I love Black Panther. I love comics. I love Marvel. I'm a black guy and that movie is being released in Black History Month. So that would just be the most epic dream come true for me. Is it a long shot? Yeah. But, you know, I'm going for it. I believe in myself and you should too. So help me out by getting there by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, that's perfectly fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me a thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel to get all the content that I have to provide. You can go to my website, check me out there and bookmark it and also look me up on social media. And go ahead guys, again, hit that subscribe button to help me reach my first milestone of 1,000 subscribers. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for War of the Planet of the Apes. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brendan Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.